Howdy folks. Happy Thursday everybody. Welcome to Hewlett Municipal. This is uh, Whiskey 43 up here in the northeastern part of Wyoming. Devil's Tower country for those of you that remember the last uh, the last flight that brought us in here. Can't see it from the ground but as soon as we get airborne you'll see it. Um, and uh, welcome to episode 15 of Nowhere Fast. It's going to be a fun night tonight. We're going to be flying from Hewlett down to Pierce, South Dakota, kind of right in the middle of the state of South Dakota. Uh, I do have the potential, maybe, to increase and fly another leg here, but uh, we're just going to kind of see how we're feeling after we get done with the with the uh, leg into South Dakota. As you can see, a few of our buddies have joined us. We've got those guys over in the Discord chat. We'll be visiting with them just a little bit, but let's get this thing going. Uh Cessna 152. It's going to be back in Hewlett, and it's going to be a lot of fun here. Let me hop over, and we'll do a quick briefing. I don't know. It might just be... Oh, yeah, we've got a few guys in there. Matt and I were so, not all right. Ago, and it's like, it's gotten to the point where you... I, in my opinion, I don't think you can trust anybody. Uh-oh. Downwind you know, Sim is making a political right. statement. Um, oh, it's such a... Game of Thrones anymore. Like, it's like everybody has an agenda. So. All right, how's it going, guys? Sorry to sorry to interrupt, but I'm ready to do the briefing. And your oh, political hey, opinions hey, have now been hey, broadcast we're... live down once. No, soon. no, no. We are <laughs> sorry. We are solving the world's problems here. That's good to know. Good to know. You're so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to wait about ten more minutes until. I oh my goodness. Well, you know what? We need something <laughs> to talk about as we're uh, coasting uh, over the plains of South Dakota. So welcome. Good to have you guys. Welcome to Hewlett and. Um, I'm just going to lay out, I guess, the route that I'm planning on flying, and then you guys are welcome to do uh, do your thing based on your aircraft, and and uh, yeah, um, it should be it should be fun. So first off, I I'm thinking I'm going to probably break this up and uh, just go from Hewlett to Pier tonight. Um, it's uh, it, the whole flight. If I was to go all the way up to the Vanderwall Ranch, would be about three and a half hours of flight time, which it, you know, it's it's doable. We've done that before, but um, I'm not sure that that's that's how I'm going to be feeling at the end of uh, at the end of this. Or or so I'm I'm leaving the door open, I guess, to go up there. And certainly, if I don't go up there, you guys are welcome to head that that direction. But um, this is kind of I guess what I'm thinking is uh, um, an easterly departure out of Hewlett to the Belfouche Reservoir, which is just past the Belfouche Airport there, the city of Belfouche. And um, from that point, it, it's there's a lot of little little cricks that come out of there, but, but one of them is the Belfouche River. And it kind of runs uh, more down sort of to the, to the southeast. And I'm going to hopefully pick up that waterway. It's a pretty... It's a pretty good-sized river, and so I'm hoping that we're able to find that. Um, and then the farther east it goes, the uh, the bigger it gets when we get just a little bit um, past Barber Private. It actually merges with the Cheyenne River and actually becomes the Cheyenne River. And then that takes us up to, uh, this is called Lake Oahe. And uh, once we get into Lake Oahe, we'll, we'll head south, follow the Oahe? lake. Oahe, yep. Am I saying that right? Yep, okay. yep. Take the uh, take the lake down here to pier, and um, at that point in time, that's kind of when we'll we'll weigh our options. That's a, I'm showing about two and a half hours for that flight for me at about 80 knots. Um, I I think we'll have for the most part uh, fair skies, and uh, it's really a nice nice day to fly. And the wind I think is going to help us. The wind is has been sort of out of the yeah 
kind of out of the south. Yeah, well, maybe not. Maybe this might be one of the few times we're getting a little bit of an easterly flow here. So um, it looks like, yeah, kind of a southeasterly uh, wind flow. Come. Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> if, if I can get the Falcon uh, 50 started. Then yeah, fine. yeah. So, uh, but otherwise, the like I say, the the forecasts are are really looking about as good as you can get for for a summer day. Um, Mitar at Hewlett is uh, 10 statute miles, zero nine or zero at 10. Um, nothing, no uh, no precipitation. Uh, in in the forecast and then piers is a similar deal um zero four zero at six and again uh what do you call that uh, jpc severe clear that's kind of what we have here yeah so that's that's my plan but again like always uh you're welcome to do whatever whatever you want to do it's um it's interesting navigationally because it gets i mean it's hilly country and there's it's you don't really have a lot of landmarks like you can't aim for a mountain peak or um you know it it really truly is uh trying to follow rivers if you go a little further south which is i think mike is planning on doing that if you follow the interstate down actually to to rapid city that area you can the the interstate kind of will take you in that general direction as well and then there's a little um, there at Phillip, uh, the the road splits and it's a highway that leads you into to Rapid or to Pier. Sorry, but um, just be careful. That's about the only place you can run into any kind of an airspace is down there around Ellsworth or uh, Rapid City Regional. Stream looks good, buddy. Oh yeah, thank you so much. By the way, Maybe. down yeah, downwind sim helped me out a ton with that. And remind me, I need to get uh, I need to get what what I did over to uh, to Dakota Pilot. He's curious about about the changes I made. So um, don't let me forget. We'll do that uh, later on. Hey, here is the Hound. Good to good to talk to you. So without any further ado, let's fire up. And it looks like we need uh, an eastbound departure out of this joint. I've I've done all the walk around stuff. I've got fuel loaded up. I'm anxious to see if my radios work in the stagger wing. I can't wait to see that you're streaming, right? I'm going to. I've got to. I've got to set a couple of things up, but. Uh... Now wait till you see this, you guys. I, I mean, I've got the NH Adrian mod for the 152, and there there now is a downwind sim mod for the stagger wing. Aha, there we go. Cabin air coming on. I actually take the, I think the window reflections are a little bit overdone. So we'll take that off. We are flying real time, so um, you know, we'll have that to deal with here as well. Looks like I'm about 220. So let's get, uh, let's get this baby synced up. We'll do it the, the cheater way. I am going to leave my frames up here. Just I've, I'm still working on a few things, and i just not 100% sure. I've had some weird crashes this week, but I'm, I'm on flight about 9 or 10 in a row that I haven't had anything happen, so I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to call it configured. Noise cancelers on. Gen on. And uh, let's see, nav, beacon, and we're about ready to go here. 2280, uh, Hewlett traffic, mic check. Oh, I always forget. This works better if I do this. Southeast. There we go. Departure, about a 110 heading, Hewlett traffic. So it looks like we need to go, boy. We have runway 14 and runway 22. And uh, I'm thinking probably, man, oh man. Um, yeah, probably, geez. 14, I don't know, it's going to be a crosser no matter what. 3002. Rob Bockery, hello, sir. Which, uh, 
which runway are you taking there, Mr. Sonante? One three. I've got one four or two two. I think I'm at the two two end. So real road it's one three three one. Yeah, you can't trust the guy that made this scenery. He doesn't know what he's doing. I don't know what to call on the radio. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Heal the traffic, Cessna 11816, we're going to be taxiing to runway 22, Heal it. All right. Heal the traffic, uh, Piper Cup departing 22, we'll uh, departure to the southeast. There's the, uh, there's the rarely used King Air Tail Drager mod. And uh, there goes some of our friends. Yeah, my my CSLs. So he's going the. He, that's Steve's going one way and we're going the other way. So that's true uncontrolled airfield flying right there. But uh, yeah, let me know, guys, on the stream how it looks. One thing that I did do is I unselected the opt. You know the the option that says optimize encoder or or something like that we're on uh we're on that sim feel free to join us rob rob i did drop in oh goodness i did drop in i don't remember if it's propeller heads or or cup of coffee the scenery so um yeah in uh, propeller heads if you if you want to join in if you if you don't want to grab the scenery that's cool both of these fields uh do exist in um in X plane as as is, so you know it's it it's one of those deals. But uh, yeah, love to have you along. And I'm just trying to look and see if I see the cub out of here. I see somebody down. No, that's just reflections off the sign. All right. Hey, Brian, I think you'll find that two two end there is actually one four. You know what? You're. I think you're absolutely correct. I just made a wrong call. Here the traffic, Cessna 11816, lining up. Uh, it's runway 14 for 816. Blue Yamaha, it's going good, except for I already screwed up my first my first radio call. I, I went, I'm going to the wrong uh, end. Well, I'm, I'm going to the right end, but I made the wrong runway call. How are you doing, sir? All right, that final's looking clear. The runway was looking clear. Uh, I'm going to get my trim set. There we go. Landing lights can come on. And I think we're ready. I think we're ready to fly. Here we go. Up, up, and away. We want an easterly departure, so this is really a good runway for us. And, uh, yeah, I think about 77 degrees if we want to hit the lake. Awesome. Yep, perfect, man. There's, uh, there's 55. She pretty much just starts to fly by herself. It's kind of awesome. And then off to the right-hand side here, as soon as we get up a little bit, we will have... We'll have Devil's Tower. Maybe if we can see it over the can't quite see it over the over the hill just yet uh, we'll get up there, oh, there it was I'm a little worried about crashing but uh, there it is Devil's Tower that is a custom object there by our good friend downwind sim he's working on actually a scenery package that uh, encompasses all three of the national monuments that are in this area Devil's Tower Mount Rushmore and Crazy Horse so, all right, man. Uh, Blue Yamaha, thanks for, thanks for popping in, buddy. It was good to see you, and uh, we'll catch so you on the next one. About zero seven zero is what Steve is saying. Yep, and I'm agreeing with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. A little bit too much. Yeah, so we'll be. This is 38 nautical miles, so I'll get my timer going. And again, we've got a little bit of wind in our face here, so um, you know we're going to be we're going to be trying for 
best forward speed, obviously, but uh, we may. Our 80, 80 KIAS may uh, may not give us the usual across the ground speed that we're that we're used to. I'm going to need. Let's see. It says uh, MSE is 6,700 right now, so we're just going to keep the climb going to 75 since we're eastbound, and then uh, once we get past the Black Hills, once we kind of get out to the Belfouche Reservoir. And we can start start heading back down. The terrain around here is is mid three thousands, really all, almost all the way into to pier. There we go, guys. That's a pretty good shot. Can't keep it level. Can't fly and uh, photograph at the same time very well. <laughs> All right, yeah, enough messing around. Mike, you coming to the reservoir? No, I'm going uh, southeast towards I-90, and then I'll uh, join that uh, Bella Force River off of uh, Bear Butte Lake. Go in your own He's Fleetwood Mac tonight. Yeah, I'm a rebel. All right, so mid 70s on the heading and uh, 75 on the on the altitude. I'm actually just going to level off and pick up airspeed and just let the let the lift guide me up. I might not need a whole heck of a lot more, to be honest with you. I'm, we might be past the worst of it here. The Black Hills we're right smack in the middle of it, kind of the northern end of the Black Hills. And so there is a, a bit of terrain here and there, but so we may be past, like I say, past the highest stuff here. Still, we'll just we'll just keep the climb going just to be prudent. But uh, so we're gonna figure pretty close to a half an hour. If we're 80 knots airspeed, we're probably probably pretty close to just 80 knots um, across the ground, which you know, is uh, is going to get us about a mile a minute. So we'll be looking for the we'll be looking for the lake here in about a half an hour. Sturgis, isn't that where they have some kind of like big bike meetup or something? Yep, and that's uh, August is when that happens. So um, there's a bunch of uh, you'll get a bunch of traffic um, around these these parts starting really starting about July 4th. These Are they still yeah. I, you know what, that's a good question. Um, I haven't heard, I they're guess, either way. Gang? Are you kidding me? Of course they're having it. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a good point. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely having it. But yeah, you'll get, um, you'll start getting traffic about the July 4th that's weekend. I still think that the Bayport flying is going to happen on Long Island because those guys are typically the kind of guys that would not stop for something like this. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would imagine so. I really Whoa. want to go to that. Well, I'm doing a little bit of a nose up, nose down roller coaster thing right now, and I'm trying to get this trimmed out. There we go. I think we're honestly we're probably high enough as it is. Pull my power back just a bit. I am leaned out as much as I can be right now. Any station radio check. Loud and clear. Hey, the radio works in this old baby. So that is downwind sim, by the way, and if you um, are a Twitch person, you uh, you might want to look him up because he is flying a renovated stagger wing that he got. Uh, he bought the uh, the stagger wing. I can't get why can't I get his stream to come up? Whoops, sorry guys. Anyway, he bought a, a stagger wing, the the Alabeo stagger wing and uh, has been working on it in plane maker and has basically redone the the entire plane 
So um, I'm pumped to see what it looks like on the stream. So, and also Jet Pilot Cinnamon, he is also streaming right now. And uh, yeah, so he's not streaming just yet, Rob, but I I do see him online. He he said that he would uh, he would be trying to stream at least a little bit of it. You know how he is. He's got. All that fancy VR stuff that he's got to get plugged in and new batteries and all the config stuff and, you know, all that fancy VR stuff. It takes him a little while. But, yeah, it'll be a good night to have a multi-stream approach. And I don't know. Steve, are you streaming also? No, I'm not a streamer. Okay. Couldn't remember. I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember. I may cross that bridge at some point. All right. Well, we're going to... I can do it. Anybody can do it. <laughs> we're going to kind of take it down here. I think, like I say, we're, we're maybe over the, the tallest portions of the Black Hills at this point in time. Most of the taller peaks are south of where we, we were anyway. And so we'll... Uh, We'll just start a little gradual descent, try to get it trimmed out right around 5,500. And who oh, knows? Modified stagger wing, Ralph. We might even uh, sniff 100 quick. knots. Uh, under 150 to 170, I think, Ooh, in cruise. Mamma mia. Is that a big, uh, like a Wasp Junior engine in there? What do they have in there? Yeah, that's what it is. It sounds fantastic. So like 500 horse? <laughs> the retractable gear too is makes muscle. a huge huge difference all right I'm going way too far north I need to get back on my about my 075 heading maybe I'll maybe I'll go about 080 just for a little bit because I was kind of like I say just a little too far to the north can't miss that first reservoir and here I am thinking that's going to be the easiest waypoint to find but uh, I missed the first reservoir I'm going to be uh, in a little bit of trouble because uh, most of my flight plan is based off of that. Although we do have a couple of VORs along the way that that we could tune if we if we needed to if we got desperate enough. Pull back the power just a bit. Don't need to be redlining here. It does kind of tend to spin up just a little bit when I'm in the descent, but uh, heck, we're we're almost making triple digits here, guys. Wow. That, uh, that warm South Dakota air blowing across the border here is helping us out. I don't know. We may be in South Dakota by now, honestly. have a little bit of a tickle so I apologize in advance for the coughing attacks that I'm probably gonna have inevitably all right there we go now we'll start to uh, start to just get it trimmed out here and somewhere in that 90 range, 90 knots, is about what I typically get in this plane. There we go. I see downwind has uh, popped online here. If I can get... Oh, boy. Yep. Anytime I step away even for a second, uh, it does that. Totally hand-flown, hand by the way. That's been kind of the cool thing about this... this um, entire trip really is it's been all hand flown uh, there have been a few a few places where we've used the VOR to help us out but uh, as you can see there's no GPS in this bad boy uh, I don't even have a DME in this thing oh gosh one thing I need to do I didn't do I'm not uh, I'm not squawking diddly let's do a 1200 and we are on bat sim so we do want to just make sure we're legal. We did, although I don't think we do now, but we did have Denver Center on earlier. Yep, now all we have is Winnipeg Center. 
So I, I'm not, generally speaking, not not thinking that we're going to have uh, a whole lot of ATC, which is fine. We're just we're just true VFR, just trying to find our way through the prairie. Well, the hills, I guess. This is kind of hilly, a hilly part of of South Dakota. I'm going to let you listen to uh, Slant Alpha. Tailwheel wheel lock, so we can push that in. Get a little tailwheel action. Let me get the rudder pedals up here alongside me. Sounds great. Oh, that's parking. <laughs> <laughs> it really does have an awesome sound pack. And he is able to give us a heck of a head that start. Be, that's the tailwheel being is the unlocked version. He can have essentially, he'll be going essentially twice as fast as we are, I think, 170-ish if he really put the hammer down. So he could he could make the entire trip in a, in a couple of hours, whereas it's going to take us two and a half hours just to make it out to pier. Though I thought for this area was a little blotchy. Um, I don't know if it would be worth me coming back through. This is uh, this is zoom level 16. I don't know if it'd be worth me going back and trying it at a little bit higher resolution or not, but uh, looks, looks decent, but not uh, like some of the places that you see. All right, well we're at least getting to that 20 miles away because he's getting pretty pretty uh, faint on his calls and again we're starting to want to go 060 instead of 075 so let's uh, let's aim a little bit more back here to a 080 just to make up for that we've been out about 12 and a half minutes so I'd say we're close to halfway to the lake by now Appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, the the point of this, if you wonder what the heck's going on, the point of Nowhere Fast, this entire series has just been to fly around the country in uh, Cessna 152 and just uh, see, visit the little tucked away secret awesome spots uh, that that you find when you fly a plane like this. So. Um, the fact that we're going from a municipal airport today to a regional airport, that's about as big as we get. Um, we generally, in this series, we're, we're flying turf airstrips or we've spent a lot of time in the mountains of Idaho and Washington and Oregon and Colorado trying to hit those, uh, those bush strips. Um, but uh, every once in a while you, you do, you get a few paved strips and and uh, that's okay too. Part of part of the uh, reason why we departed out of Hewlett is because we actually the last Nowhere Fast series was uh, we held it in conjunction with a virtual USA Flying Club event called the uh, called the Bear Lodge Fly-In, and we we flew from Laramie, Wyoming, up to Hewlett and made a few stops at some smaller strips on the way. But uh, anyway. So if, you, if you've never heard of the Virtual USA Flying Club, I'll make sure to get you a, a, a link there. There's a little bit of a, of a process to get signed up. You do need, need to be a VAT Sim member. Um, no, that's not the Belfouche Reservoir, by the way. Uh, but uh, if you enjoy flying GA and you enjoy uh, you know this type of stuff, low and slow, uh, it's not all low and slow. I shouldn't say that. One of the events that I actually hosted was, uh, was a BizJet um, events so sometimes they're they're not low and slow but um, yeah check it out virtual USA flying club like I say let me I'll even drop one in there right now while I'm thinking about it because if I don't right now I'll forget I think I see the Belfouche Reservoir coming up here as well so I want to make sure that I get all this taken care of first 
Um, all right, there we go. So you do also, I guess I, I should say you need to be a Discord person because it's a it's a Discord club. But uh, Jet Pilot Cinnamon, the other guy that's streaming, and Slan Alpha, the other guy that's streaming, and Steve PHL, the other guy that's flying along, we're all we're all members of the club, and and it's uh, we've enjoyed the heck out of it. So stop by and click on that uh, click on that little invite link, and and one of the admin will get you set up. All right, so there we go, Belfouche Reservoir. We're about. We're making better time than we thought. We're only at 16 minutes out, so we're we're doing a little better than a mile a minute, which is which is fantastic. We'll take that. So the next challenge for us is to find uh, the Belfouche River, which again is a pretty major river. It it comes out of here to the southeast and. Um, you know, driving around and being familiar with this with this country a little bit, uh, I I can tell you that it is it is a pretty good sized river. So um, there's my Discord link, by the way, if you want to hop over there and say hi. Uh, love uh, love connecting with new people, especially connecting with new people that know more than me, which is almost everybody. But uh, get a lot of get a lot of good tips and um, feedback yeah, from Steve, folks. Yeah, Steve, thanks for hollering at me. Appreciate it. Uh-oh. JP, uh, down one's having some trouble. If I, oh, if there I we hit go. the arrow keys, um, and I think that X-Plane has the focus because I switched to an outside view to change the view, and then if I happen to be on the Oculus mirror, it just goes berserk. So thank you for that. Hey, that Devil's Tower looks pretty nice over there, though. <laughs> uh, coming up, buddy. Coming up. In fact, I and once I sort of get it all wrapped up, uh, you're probably one of those on the feedback list, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Uh, scenery designer to scenery designer, right? Uh, has its privileges. How about that? <laughs> oh, I'll do anything for a freebie. <laughs> That's uh, the other thing about about the the Virtual USA Flying Club is, is quite a few of us are say, that's what she said, we dabble no, in <laughs> we all dabbled in scenery development a little bit <laughs> so fair, fair enough JPC all right well we're gonna okay. try to find we're we gonna try to find this guy coming out kind of comes out so there is a here's what I'm looking for there's a there's a pretty good sized dam and then there's a, a big canal irrigation canal that runs up here and then the the river basically splits right at that spot so we need to find that dam on the eastern side and then we just need to track essentially you know like I say it's a, it's generally southeast I've, I've got 115 in in that in in Sky vector, but I don't. I can't say that it's going to be exactly 115. Uh, we just need to kind of get across and find the dam first. Hey, Don. Happy Thursday, my friend. Welcome to the stream. You ever been to Belfouche, South Dakota? You ever been to the Black Hills? That's the country we're in right now. Mount Rushmore, Devil's Tower. Crazy Horse, Sturgis, Rapid City. That's kind of a neat, uh, neat part of the world. All right, we're gonna follow this little peninsula because it looks to me like on Sky Vector the dam is right directly across the other side of the of the reservoir, just opposite this peninsula. And then we're going to find out if the follow the Belfouche River idea was a good one or not. <laughs> we may end up we may end up just uh, wandering aimlessly across the South Dakota countryside. But like I said, we do have a couple of VORs we can use if we if we really get turned around. I I know generally speaking, uh, if we go east 
at some point we're going to hit the Missouri River. <laughs> it's kind of one of those deals. Uh, you know, if you go east far enough, you'll hit that Missouri River, and then you just have to decide: uh, Do I turn and go south or north to get to to get to Pier Regional? Oh wow, that looks really good. Hold on, I have to look. Yep, Load. that's so. This is Downwind Sims' uh, rendition of this. Again, this is not what you'll see, even if you have ortho. You're you're not going to see the the tower look that that good. But uh, what he's Load been able to road. do is is pretty pretty awesome. Thank you guys. Pretty Appreciate darn it. awesome. Still a few things to do. Uh, it's not quite exactly where I want it to be, but it's really close. Yep. So JPC is uh, he's closing in on on Bear Butte right now, and there that's Bear Butte down there. That's uh, that's his aiming point. That's about the last piece of high ground in the in the state of South Dakota that <laughs> that you're going to be able to use as a reference point. So um, from there he's going to pick up the interstate, which is a really solid uh, navigational aid. Ours is a little sketchier, so we'll see. Like I say, let's start. Let's see if we can find the dam. I think it's supposed to be. It's right where my uh, my window. What do you call that? Not a spar, but you know what I'm saying. It's right behind that. So I should be. If I was in the cockpit, I could be leaning out. It should be over there somewhere. I, I could take it down, by the way. I'm, I'm not going to, but I could really take it down to 3,500 here and be okay. Sometimes you get a little too low, though, and you sort of lose perspective on everything. And uh, I don't want to do that. But uh, if I could see the canal, and again, it's just kind of like a little, a little Y here. The canal stays north of the river, and the Belfouche River just... Just kind of wiggles its way. Uh, there is um, pretty good fishing all around the, these, this country. I don't know if there's any goldens. I don't know if it's quite high enough for goldens, but there's some pretty good trout. All right. Well, here we go. I, I'm feeling like let me move over just a skosh here. Feeling like I'm seeing. Maybe not. Gosh. Okay, there's no dam over there. It's got to be right here. That could be the canal running right here, and this could be the the river. So the river's not. I mean, it's the color is going to blend, but it's again fairly wide and and pretty defined. You can see it, what it does is a lot of this winding horseshoeing around and uh, so you know it's it's not like you know it's not going to be cutting straight across the countryside but I think I think if we just sort of do one of these just have our head on a swivel and we're heading about 110 right now and again I had on my on my sky vector I had 115 as the as the um, Heading, so I'm gonna I'm gonna live with that. So I'm gonna reset the timer. Now we have a I have a 43 nautical mile leg down the Belfouche River until it um, until it runs into the Cheyenne River, and at that point I think somewhere shortly in in there is when it becomes I think it officially becomes the Cheyenne River. Nope, I take that back. This is going to be, this is going to be where, actually, where I think uh, we meet back up, kind of with Jet Pilot Cinnamon. Although he'll probably be out ahead of us, but uh, yeah. So we're going to have to decide things like that. Is that the is that the river? I don't think so. I think that's a dirt road. I think uh, I think the river is still kind of running this way. So we'll just we'll just tend to keep. A bit of a 
115-ish heading. And so if uh, we were doing a little bit better than a, a mile a minute, I'm going to climb to get some better perspective here. Did you do flight model work on that too, Ralph, or just some of the VR stuff? Uh, I, I did uh, a little bit of everything. The only thing that I haven't touched is the sounds. Oh, you did modeling too. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, since we're all on the Discord and all of us are streaming, I'll talk about it on my stream if, if you want to hear about it, rather than clutter this, this uh, Discord channel up. Is that all right? Sure, Apollo. Yeah, whatever, man. Hey, tuba flight. Coming in with the rate. And a few, uh, looks like a few, oh, 757, sorry, 757 coming in with the raid. Hey, thank you, sir. Dave, how was it over there? You were, you were over in, were you in Russia today? I popped in just for a minute and, uh, saw you, saw you having some fun over on PauseCon. But, uh, good to, good to see you. Tuba Flight, greetings to you as well. Italy, okay, thank you. Yeah, one thing about Dave is he does such a good job of, uh, just getting getting around the world, and I, I s tend to be in a little bit of a rut, and I kind of end up flying in the U.S. and Canada mostly. So, Phoenix, hello, Kenny Monster, hi, my friend, and uh, also uh, Warsaw, uh, Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik, I don't even know how to say that, in Geneva. Very cool, very cool. Well, it's it's awesome to see that uh, age ticket. Hey, good to see you, man. Welcome. So uh, we're we're currently now in western South Dakota. We just departed from a small municipal airport, actually in the northeastern corner of Wyoming, called Hewlett Municipal, and uh, it is right up there, within a stone's throw of Devil's Tower. And uh, we're making our way down to a regional airport in the in central South Dakota called Pier Regional, and we're following currently following the Belfouche River. And I believe that uh, we're looking at either the town of uh, Nisland or Vale, South Dakota. I don't I don't know we're a little bit uh, it's the the Belfouche River has proven to be just slightly tougher to track than we had thought but I think it's over there in that little that little cutout here um, but anyway uh, this is the nowhere fast episode number 15 and we've flown all the way from uh, actually we've flown from Wyoming clear out to Linden Washington and then we flew, uh, worked our way back through Oregon and into Idaho, down into uh, Utah, the Canyonlands. Actually, 757 Spy jumped in there and joined us on one of those uh, lakes, which was pretty cool. Um, and then uh, from Utah, we, we went into Colorado for a while. Then we zipped back into Wyoming for um, a, uh, it was... Not a poker run per se, but uh, the Devil's Tower. Well, we called it the Bear Lodge fly-in. We we flew from Laramie, Wyoming, up to Hewlett, Wyoming, and uh, yeah, that was actually for the Virtual USA Flying Club. So um, anyway, yeah, watch out for the UFOs. <laughs> it uh, it definitely has that um, definitely has that lure to it, no doubt about it. Um, Got a couple guys that are punching the, punching me right in the old white heart there. Appreciate that. Let's see, Captain, Captain Hall, and uh, I didn't, I missed one early on there. Uh, Kilaluch. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, but uh, welcome, welcome to Prop Culture, and uh, glad to have you, glad to have you aboard. How good are your pilotage tracking skills? Cause, yeah, no, I might need you. I might need you. So this is a 43 nautical mile leg. I was trying to do a little bit of math. And I think what uh, what we're going to end up doing here is this is going to take us about 25 to 30 minutes to uh, to get down 
we're actually just a little bit north of Sturgis, South Dakota. So that's maybe for those of you that are not completely familiar with with the area, that's uh, the Sturgis Bike Rally is another sort of uh, famous landmark or famous event, I should say. That's coming up here next month, actually. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, so he's already. So let's. Um, so here's here. Steve PHL, by the way, Jet Pilot Cinnamon and Downwind Sim are also joining me on the flight. And there may be more, but those are the ones that have checked in. And those guys right now are down here. So that gives you an idea of. You know, I think we're just kind of like up here. That gives you an idea of just how much quicker they are. I think Steve is in. I think Steve and JPC are both in the Skyhawk. And uh, Downwind Sim's flying the stagger wing. He's got the gear up, and he's got all 500 horses. Um, and he's he's going to be doing about twice as fast as we are. So I don't know. He may he may cruise down to Denver and back before we, we get to pier. I don't know. But um, anyway, good group. It's been fun so far. Beautiful, beautiful day to fly. Just an absolutely picture-perfect day. Light winds, clear skies. And uh, yeah, Captain Hall, it's good to good to have you along. Appreciate everybody that came over from from Dave's Dave stream. This is the Carinata 152 with the NH Adrian mod. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, fun little fun little plane. And uh, kind of was getting ready to talk a little bit about why this leg. And there's I guess a couple of reasons. So number one, part of the whole um, Nowhere Fast series is just, it's almost like user request. It's like, you know, you call you call the radio station and you request a song. Well, that's kind of what happens here. So um, please keep that in mind if you're new to this um, and uh, you, you know of a, of a cool little, little airport I need to visit. Um, it's not too far away. I mean, it's, uh, it is a 152 and all, so I, you know, but uh, let me know what that is, and that's part of I, I adjust the route based on suggestions of, of people. And so I'm actually heading to Minnesota right now. Um, I mean, it's going to take me a, a few legs, but I'm, I'm heading out to Minnesota because uh, Kenny Monster was uh, somebody that said, hey, there's a cool airstrip out here. You need to check it out. So Captain Hall's, uh, oh, trained in the PA-38 Tomahawk. Awesome. That is so, so cool, man. Um, I'm very envious. It was never something I was able to to pursue. Other things, life happened. You know how that how how that uh, sort of sort of takes place. And my my career path went a little different direction. No regrets, but uh, definitely definitely a little envious of of people that were able to get their pilot's license. And yeah. Back in 2000, 2001. Very cool. Very cool. Now that, uh, Captain Hall, that doesn't seem like too long to me. And I don't, you, I don't know if you're my age or not, but uh, if I say 2000, 2001 to my, to my kid, man, that's like ancient history. <laughs> uh, you got grounded. Oh, bummer. Bummer. Oh, pursued music. That's awesome. Yeah, my mom's a, a, mu a musician, a former music teacher, and uh, can play every instrument in the world. Also super uh, talented vocalist and you're 32 so 2000 2001 that probably does seem like a long time ago <laughs> man i am losing i'm losing steam here guys what's going on i'm trying to climb guess i don't need to climb up uh, i'm not quite at the point where i mean the mses are 39 and 3700 so i mean i'd be okay if i if i drop down but i was hoping to get up a little higher so i could maybe pick up pick up the belfouche river again but uh anyway yeah we'll level off we're almost five thousand killer luck uh, also a musician am i saying that right T please tell me how to pronounce your name because i i i don't I don't want to mispronounce it there. Kill a luck. Yep. Played the drums. Awesome. 
Yeah, ancient history to Rob Valkyrie, too. Rob, I thought you were an old man like me. Are you just a young fella? Whippersnapper? Well, I hope you never lose that. Um, kill of luck. I hope you. I hope you stay sharp. That's uh, that's something that I, despite having a mom that was musical, I was not able to. Uh, I played. I played the trombone. I played the trumpet, but I could never quite. Yeah, you're you're an old fuddy-duddy like me, Rob. I'm 52, man. That 2000. That was just. That was just a blink of an eye. That was just yesterday, but. Uh, Anyway, yeah, that's uh, I was never able to to pick up on the drums. I just my brain just wouldn't let my hands and feet do different things. So it's like lunch, kill a kill a kill a lunch, kill a lunch. Okay, thanks, man. Good to have you, buddy. So yeah. Oh, Captain Hall started on the drums at four. Wow, your parents uh your parents were patient folks, weren't they? I have a three-year-old grandson, and um, he shows a little bit of musical interest. And and one of those instruments that he's interested in, of course, as I think all young kids are, are the drums. It'll be interesting to see. All right, well, we've completely lost sight of the Belfouche River, by the way. But like I said, the Belfouche River just generally runs kind of this direction. About 115, 120. So we're just staying on it, and uh, we're gonna. It'll it'll meet up. It'll it'll make a turn to the um, to the east here in just a bit, and merge with the Cheyenne River. It'll be a lot lot easier to see, I hope. Um, and then again, if uh, if worse comes to worse, I'm just gonna point it east, and we we eventually will run into the Missouri River, which is uh, which is runs right through the middle of South Dakota by the way for those of you that don't know that's it's a time it's uh it's when the mountains mountain time zone turns into the central time zone so yeah so here's the route we departed uh Hewlett and we're right now probably about at the about 3900 we're about halfway in in between but this is kind of when the Belfouche River gets a little bit a little bit bigger a little bit wider a little bit deeper but again if I get too lost um I'll just point it generally east and and you can't miss it um, it literally runs from canada all the way i don't even i don't know how far south it goes into oklahoma i think but uh, you can't miss it the missouri river but uh, yeah we're looking for this is pier regional and this is uh, lake Oahe, and we're gonna we're trying to pick our way up uh, up the river valley here just because uh, it's it's pretty neat country <laughs> Uh, the Melvin Band. I like that. That's got a that's got a ring to it. Melvin's Band. I'm a I'm a huge music fanatic. I do. I love I love my music. I'm just not very good at it. I'm the off key guy. Okay, I'm starting to feel a little turbulence here. Our winds are picking up ever so slightly. Just about 15 minutes. I was planning on, again, about 25 minutes for this leg. This uh, this trip from Hewlett to Pier is going to take about two and a half hours or so. That may be a little less if I'm... Definitely a lot uh, more uh, on the laid back for one of your nowhere fast a lot e a lot of easy navigation tonight well that's good i, I you picked the right way to go because i've already lost the the river and i am oh. yeah oh. so you definitely picked the right way to go oh i spoke for myself there huh? <laughs> oh i think i'll i'll get there eventually you're not lost you're not lost already are you brant no i'm not lost i'm in south dakota i know where i'm at <laughs> fair enough gotta play that home field advantage <laughs> yeah yeah you see you you know like that we're all stuck up here in the nowhere fast series in places that we've <laughs> never been 
Redneck love and life. Hey, Melon. Yeah, or hey, Redneck. How are you, man? It's pretty well defined in the ortho uh, the further east you go. Yeah, that's... I, I was... When I originally thought about using it, that's why. Because it's a pretty good size river. But just initially, coming out of the reservoir, it's definitely not much. Um, but uh, I, I think I have it here. I think we're doing okay. Uh, that's the Belfouche River right there, you guys. That's it. It's it's a winder. I think I can. It's a bender. It's a, yeah. It's neat country, by the way. If you've never been to the Black Hills of South Dakota, um, it's it's one of those, take the family. It's a great place to be a tourist. And uh, just, uh, just plan on taking it slow. But there's lots and lots to do. Um, and uh, lots of things to see. And it's just a really, really neat country. I, you probably can't do anything right now, but <laughs> eventually, when when things return to semi-abnormal, plan a plan a summer vacation out here. Check it out. All right. Yep. There's that's Bear Butte. And that was the that was the navigational landmark so that. Melvin, uh, I'm just over uh, Spearfish. I'm heading south into Lead. Ah, infamous Lead. Yes, you can you can tell the folks at home all about uh, all about Lead. I don't know the story as well as you do, so I think you ought to tell the story because it's it's worth hearing. What was the name of that pizza joint? And I said, you recall? No, I don't. All right. Probably. Well, how do you spell this this town? You could probably Google it. L L E A D. Yeah. If you have a if you have access to uh, Google, look up Lead, uh, South Dakota Pizza. One fifty two Avatech. Yep. Lab. That's it. Pizza, pizza Lab. lab. Yep. <laughs> That's it. All right, yeah, you guys are going to want to hear this story. This is Go awesome. Tell the story of Pizza Lab that had 4.6 stars on Google. All right. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell it on my stream if you want to listen. I'll Hold spare on. you. <laughs> I got to pull up your stream. Hold on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Downwind Sim, by the way, is streaming. If you, uh, if you want to hop over there, he's streaming. He has modified a stagger wing, so uh, he's. I'm flying the NH mod, NH Adrian mod. Of this he's got his own mod of the Alabeo stagger wing, which looks really really cool. He's a he's a VR guy. So if you want to hear the story about the Pizza Lab, uh, you can go that over right. to his stream and and uh, yeah, he uh, the town of Lead is. I will just tell you this, it's it's right in the Black Hills and it is, there's not a flat piece of ground anywhere in the town. The town is completely built on hillsides and it's just wild. It's, it's a huge old mining town and uh, yeah, he, he's got a story about about something that, that you you won't, you won't hardly be able to believe it, but it's, it's a Again, just one of the cool things about this area. So I won't spoil it, but uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, so. So that's so part of the series. Um, part of the one of the key components of the Nowhere Fast series is flying the Cessna 152. Um, I initially I was looking for a 150, but I I. Uh, this this plane went on sale, so I bought this plane first, and I've loved it. It's it's been good with the with the mod. It's awesome. Um, now I I've since uh, kind of cat ladied up on Cessnas, and I've got like four of them. But anyway, um, but the reason why I I am flying this particular series in this particular plane is because uh, the my my grandfather was actually the guy that that piqued my interest and exposed me to aviation. At an, at an early age. In fact, the namesake of the channel, Melvin Leroy, that's actually his name, uh, not mine. So uh, the, this is a tribute to him, and this uh, little this series here and there is something I, I know he would have loved to do, and he, I'm sure he did many of these himself. But I can remember sitting in his, uh, 
his 150 and uh, they were he he lived in South Dakota that was that's my grandparents and and uh, so I spent a lot of time out out this way and a little further east but um, anyway so that's uh, that's kind of part of the part of the stream and part of the reason why I, I decided to go on this little journey their age ticket um, you enabled AD stats and ran one but uh, but it's blank are you so you talking about in this in this plane there's AD stats I, I guess I don't know what that is is that an option that you get from up here Avatech 320 thank you so much uh, punching me right in that old white heart appreciate that I might I I may have to look if that's a I guess if that's an option in this mod age ticket I don't I don't know um, I'm not familiar with that so if you can if you can expand abstas adstas and now anyway um, I, I guess expand on what you're if you're talking about something different let me know and I'm if I can answer that question I'm happy to but uh, yeah, welcome to Prop Culture. There, Avatech 320. This is uh, what what I do over here. It's GA stuff and it's um, off the beaten path stuff. And it's generally with uh, with other guys. I got a really really connected with an awesome group of of sim aviators, and some are real world aviators, which is which is fantastic because I love the feedback that they give me by the way I, you're, you're seeing my discord invite I'm gonna toss out the virtual USA Flying Club just while everybody's still here because if you're a GA person that right now is I think in my my opinion one of the best GA clubs that uh, that we have going in 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 bat sim and it's not just a, an x-plane club I know a lot of us are x-planers but um, it's uh, it's whatever you like to fly and if it's just if it's a GA plane, then uh, you're probably going to find somebody else that loves the same plane in that club. And uh, we do we put together events. Probably, I think for a while there during the pandemic, we were doing we were doing four events a month. Um, I think now we're kind of back into a regular flow of about three per month. And so anyway, uh, check it out. There's a bit of a sign up process. You do have to have a VAT sim ID. And uh, you have to go through just a little bit of a of a wait while an, an admin, you know, checks on your uh, checks on your application. Oh boy, I've been redlining here for a while, guys. I'm gonna back that off. Let's not blow the engine up. There's. Uh, so how, how was the pizza? <laughs> the pizza was awesome, and so was the ice cream. <laughs> and uh, and the people are very friendly. And uh, and I think they do give tours to the uh, to the to the lab, and um, but we we didn't have time. But I think they do give tours. So if you ever get up here, go check it out. Yeah, you guys on my stream. If you didn't go over to hear the story, just 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 Google search. Wasn't there some kind of movie, you guys, where they lead where South they Dakota, open up another dimension or something, and all these evil things come out and all that? What was yeah, that? And called? there's this under, there's this huge underground lab that they have in this little tiny South wow. Dakota town. Had some gal, and they turned it into a video game. There was a heroine. Well, if you think about it, if you have a yeah, no, movie, I, you no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so our uh, our river's getting better to follow now, so I feel good about that. We are uh, 25 minutes in, so I'm feeling like we're actually uh, getting to so. the merger you, you, of uh, maybe the merger of the Belfouche and the Cheyenne River. I don't I don't know how big the Cheyenne River is down here, but when they come together, um, the oh, the President actual Resident Evil was that it? Oh, that, uh, right? that might be that yeah, might be. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that completely, but that that does sound uh, what like what you're talking about. Yeah, so that's Brant. That's what Lead reminds me of. Like <laughs> she was explaining the whole neutrino story and all of that stuff, and I'm oh, like, oh boy, this is a little creepy.
but anyway, the when the Cheyenne River and the Belfouche River meet, it actually, uh, I think at that point, it, it, it just becomes the Cheyenne River. And so um, we're doing good. We're doing good. That means we're getting within about, oh, about 100 miles or so of the lake, Lake Oahe, maybe a little bit closer to that, actually, the the western arm of it reaches out quite a bit. So I'm going to reset the timer here again, and we're going to plot this uh, plot this next leg about 34 miles, and then that's when I'm seeing, again, I'm seeing the, uh, I think that's when, actually, that's when, yeah, that's when the two, the two bodies of water, the two rivers um, merge. So here's here's where we are. I think this is kind of the, the bend in the Belfouche is getting bigger, more Hold pronounced. On my to follow you downwind, so hopefully they did. And then here's where the Cheyenne River uh, kind of kind of sli slides Mike. in. Well, so actually it's technically it should be I right there, right there. I do always enjoy watching the VR. Setup. So this is a 24 nautical oh, mile leg, thanks. and uh, so. Yeah, I should get. I should do like a little. Plan on about like 15 a minutes. Practical tour of what I really sit in front of. And then what you know, what I see, because it's you know what I, I it feels like I'm actually in the airplane, but uh, in reality I'm sitting in my office. I would like this. He's really I'm sitting in. He's really sitting in the same type of underground cave that those scientists there at Leeds, South Dakota, are sitting in. Messing with the neutrinos. <laughs> yep. <laughs> fair enough, fellas. Fair enough. <laughs> You're using those neutrinos for that VR headset. <laughs> uh. So I think most people, when they think of South Dakota, they think of just the, the eastern part of it, which is very, very flat. Uh, well, the central part, which is very, very flat, lots of lakes, all kinds of water, um, great, uh, great farmland, and uh, but this this part is really, I think, almost my favorite part of South Dakota. It's just lots of hills, and and uh, rivers that are running here and there, and um, not as many lakes per se, but just uh, just a lot more up and down terrain. I don't know, maybe may it just kind of reminds me of a little more of where I live in Wyoming with, you know, without the mountains, although, you know, the, the Black Hills are just right there, kind of behind us. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's not 100 percent different than than where I live right now. But, uh, yeah, lots of lots of really good hunting and fishing. And that's also some of the things I like to do, which is maybe why I, I enjoy this part of South Dakota. We'll be coming up here. Oh boy. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, actually, we may have went past it already. Uh, the Badlands of South Dakota. I think we maybe went past it already. Yeah, rats. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna see if I can find it on the map and see if we're see how close. Yeah, it's, so the Badlands are. Yeah, the Badlands are gonna be quite a bit further south than we're gonna want to go, actually. So yeah, darn it. But uh, so you're probably familiar though with the Badlands. Um, but it's clear on the south side of I-90, which is down a little further. Yes, my dear. To go where? They didn't. They didn't. I yeah. They did not talk to me unless they talked to to mom. Huh. Yeah, that's not good. I'm with you, honey. I'm with you.
All right, sorry about that. I need to uh, kind of head back over here, get back on the river. Don't want to get too far away. So the game plan here really has uh, has been up in the air slightly. We we have in our back pocket a a small strip called the Vanderwall Ranch, which is a little private strip right across the border in North Dakota. So north of north of Pier, about an hour or so. And so I, I'm leaving that out there for the guys, They, especially the ones that are in faster aircraft. They may want to head up there. I don't know if I'm going to do that leg tonight or not. Um, I'm going to kind of see, first of all, what the... We may be out of daylight. <laughs> and the Vanderwall, private, the Vanderwall Ranch private strip, needless to say, is not a lighted strip. And there, there's not a lot around it that... A fella can divert to. I think the nearest airport is, oh heck, a good, uh, oh man, I don't even know, like a good 50 miles maybe to the south, but, uh, yeah, maybe not quite that far, but no, maybe about that far, but anyway, regardless, I, I the one thing I don't want to do is get, kind of get headed up that direction, and, uh, you know, if you were flying this in real life, right, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't necessarily want to just get up somewhere where maybe there's no fuel and, and uh, no, no motel or anything like that. And there's some definite little tightsy towns here in this part of South Dakota. So you, a, a guy's going to be, going to be smarter to stay in a place like Pier that has, you know, I don't know, it's uh, nine or ten thousand people in it or maybe a little bit more it's it's got more options for basically everything so um, we're going to get on the ground i guess in pier to make a make a long story short or a short story long get on the ground in pier and and see what what the whole situation looks like and uh, if we feel like we can make that last little little leg we will and if not we'll just we'll just plan to fly that leg uh, at another time, which is okay, because again, part of the part of this series is just, um, you know, you just you just take it easy and you fly what you what you can on a given day when you have a chance, and uh, there's no hurry. The only thing I want to do is I want to be back in my hometown, in Central Wyoming, at the end of December. That was my goal: is to just fly around to as many different places as I could in a calendar year, and. Uh, visit as many states as possible that kind of thing man there's a lot there's a lot to see when you're flying a plane like this there really is it's been a it's been really really enjoyable nobody's given me by the way any uh any little small hidden gem airfields you know uh to to check out and i'm kind of i'm i after the ones that kenny monster have suggested out there in minnesota i'm actually out of airport suggestions so if you know of any kind of the north or north and south dakota area minnesota area i don't mind even going a little further east or further south um, i don't know how much farther to the east i can go and still make it back to wyoming by december uh, one of the airports that was suggested to me by jet pilot cinnamon is a really cool airport it's called bayport and that's clear out in new york which uh, again is an awesome field and we've done a lot of things with it with the virtual usa flying club but it just for this particular series it just wasn't feasible for me to get all the way out there because uh, i only do this once or twice a month you know so you're just not going to make it all the way out there and back uh, but i could see myself you know getting out uh if i would have been thinking i could have done I uh, could have done Oshkosh or something. I'm I'm a little too far away to do Oshkosh, but uh, you know that's uh, out that Oshkosh area might be might be reachable for me, or or down into uh, you know Texas. Maybe I can get down there a little bit, fly around down into uh, to New Mexico, and 
you know, I haven't done really one of the one of the areas I have not hit is California as well and Nevada I do love those mountainous areas so but uh, but I'm also not opposed to a, a ranch strip in in South Dakota so <laughs> if you have a if you have a secret hidden away little gem of an airport that I just uh, should should absolutely see let me know in the chat All right, this leg here, I think uh, we're coming up on the end of it. And again, our our Belfouche River is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to become the, the Cheyenne River. And uh, the shadows are getting longer and longer as well. So we we may end up, you know, what's the old, out, out here we would hold our hand up, right, to figure out how many hours of sunlight you have left. And if you hold your hand up to the, you know, to the horizon, and it's that's one hand is or for every hand of space between the horizon and the sun is about an hour of hour of sunlight left. <laughs> I would uh, I would guess that's about what we have left. Kenny, you're absolutely right, and I'm happy that you said that because I actually put a spot in for you at the uh, B and D Flyers Club. But but you're right, man. That since uh, since you were the one that tipped me off on that airfield, uh, you definitely need to have a spot, and I will I will remedy that, and it'll be a it'll be a part of the uh, the Minnesota airfield package version 1.1. So if you guys get into to Pier, uh, you don't feel like you have to wait on me. If you want to give it a try and, and head up to Vanderwall, um, you're totally fine to, to do that if you if you feel like making that uh, that last leg. <laughs> I'm still playing out here in the Black Hills. I'm heading your way now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I'm not worried about you catching me in that thing. That's for sure. Okay, fair enough. As Mike would say, I'm pedaling as hard as I can. Got to pedal fast here. I'm 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 throwing peanuts to the chipmunks about as fast as I can keep my hand in the bag. <laughs> Yep, look at that uh, right up there. You can see the river really getting a lot more pronounced. I think that must be our our spot where the in Wyoming we would call that the wetting of the waters, where one river uh, becomes another river essentially. And uh, I think that's kind of what we have—a little wetting of the waters there. Belfouche becoming the Cheyenne River, and so that'll mean we're going to make our last turn essentially toward. Um, toward Lake Oahe, which is uh, it's just a big lake that's a part of a part of the Missouri River. It's been dammed up near um, near Pierce, South Dakota, and it's just this big, huge lake and recreation area. Um, actually, was one of the places that my grandfather loved to go fishing. He would haul his boat. Uh, they were they live about three hours, maybe even a little more to the east of Pier, and uh, that was the big thing in the summer a couple two or three times a summer those guys would load up their boats and and head out that way and come home with just a pile of pile of walleye and uh, I mean one of those one of those deals 
a homemade wooden boat. You can you can believe that. That sucker that sucker could fly too, man. It was it was no it was no uh, no drift boat, man. That thing would roll. I don't know how big the big old Johnson motor on the back, but could pull skiers and just uh, it would it could really rock and roll. Flying earlier, thought I had the RMI figured out, but don't. Yeah, that's that's flight sim, right? Think you have something figured out? One minute, the next minute, and not so much. Hopefully, the stream's been better. Again, uh, big uh, thank you to all the people that gave me suggestions about. Streamlabs OBS and uh, especially downwind sim who burned some midnight oil with me the other the other day to help me uh, tweak it and kind of get over the hump and I did a couple of things in my settings um, I turned off the uh, there's a setting at the beginning when you when you go live that uh, says enable like uh, optimize encoder or something like that so uh, I turned that off. I turned my frames per second off, or sorry, from 60. It, it was set at 60. I turned that down to 30 because there's no reason to go more than 30. And uh, yeah, so essentially, I think what what it was doing is I had I had my uh, my output settings too high, and so Streamlabs was having to the the encoder was having to work overtime to take what I was actually streaming and and put it into a format that uh, an output format basically that that uh, would work and, and I don't have the graphics card for a lot of that I, I've, I've that's the weak point the choke point in my system right now is my graphics card and so yeah it just it's not fast enough to, to do all those heavy calculations that I think Streamlabs was needing. So it was just better to, to actually, you know how sometimes it is with a with the motor, you know, um, if you try to run it too hard, it, it doesn't run great. And so you back off a little bit and it's, it's much, much better. So look at that flat field, man. That makes me want to go down there and do a touch and go. Gonna resist the temptation. But man, this is this is some country. Gorgeous. What was that? Oh, just a reflection off the water. I saw that white stuff down there. I'm like, is that like a little, little housing development or something? A little cabin down there on the river? Okay, well I am gonna estimate that we are now over the Cheyenne River and so we officially have 72 nautical miles until we hit the uh, the outskirts of Lake Oahe. I think we're about right there. So I'm going to plot a course here about 070. That puts us way out here in the middle. You know we're going to start to see that western arm a lot sooner than 72 miles, probably more like about 50 miles. So, you know, here within a half an hour or so, we should start to see this lake. And then it's just a matter for us to just follow the shoreline. And it bends around to the south, and that takes us right into Pier Regional. The winds, when we departed, were favoring an approach to the east. But uh, we'll have to do a little weather check once we get a little closer. Yeah, sorry, Kenny. That's, it is frustrating. Um, no doubt about that. The only thing that I think uh, about when I run across something like that is just uh, how much how much satisfaction you get when you actually troubleshoot something and and then it works for you. But of course, as soon as I got that problem solved, and that was Tuesday night, I didn't even put 
I didn't even put Tuesday night stream up. I think I don't know if it's still up or not, but I it was so choppy and bad that I didn't even put it up. But uh, I got everything squared away Tuesday night after the stream, and then sure enough, as as I go to shut down my computer, what do I see but a message to update Windows? And it's just like every little thing that you update, you know, you run that risk of of having something else break, and so. So far, it's not been bad, but now I see there's an update to XPilot and another update to the X-Plane beta, and so I don't know. I think the big thing with the update to the X-Plane beta was around the Flight Factor stuff not working, and so now apparently that uh, all the Flight Factor stuff, if you're an airline guy, that uh, that works. I actually heard that. That was one thing I heard when I was watching 757 Spies flight earlier today, as he he mentioned that. So uh, you guys that came over from his his stream, you already know that. But I'm not really a uh, heavy, wide and heavy guy. I do I do fly occasionally. Some of these uh, vintage airliners, I I really like the uh, the Fly J Sim stuff. Um, I do still hop back over to P3D every now and again, and there's a there's a DC8 that is made by Aerosoft that I love and um, there's an L1011 that's made by Captain Sim that I love and there's a 737-200 I think that's also made by Captain Sim so I when I fly a, an airliner I, I tend to I tend to drift towards um, the older the older planes although I do have a PMDG 737 I saw, but I put a link to the multi switch for the three of us in your do you, do you arrive already, Mike? I haven't arrived yet. I'm still probably a good, like, 25, 30 minutes out. I'm just starting to get where uh, the Cheyenne River is going to start really widening out to join the, the, the Missouri River. Just starting to get to, like, that. There's, like, that dry patch that almost looks like a salt flat on the sectional. I'm starting to get up to that part. Okay, that's All cool. Right, I've, never, I've never seen the multi-stream deal before. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a neat little feature, especially when we're all going at it, kind me, of doing the same thing. Let me show you. I've given, been given that link out to the uh, the chat and sweet. Kind of letting people know, make sure to follow you. And yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and I would I would definitely recommend the same thing, guys. Uh, the other guy that's uh, that's buzzing along with us is Steve PHL. Don't want to forget about him, but uh, you'll connect with him if you come over to the Discord. Um, Kenny Monster says, uh, gives me a feeling of superiority because it's so easy looking and at the GPS. And if that fails, I'd have a better chance, to, yeah, than the people who don't. Yeah, sure, but uh, the L1011, it, it, it didn't, uh, which is lucky. Um, yeah, the TriStar, the TriStar, Don. Um, I, uh, that's what I hear, and that's I'm so excited about that because I, I don't really I, I just kind of sort of migrated away. I didn't really make like a hard and fast decision to stop doing P3D, but I've just sort of, uh, like I say, just sort of moved away from it. I I just find myself um, streaming more and more on X Plane than P3D. Um, I still like P3D. I have version 4.5. Uh, I don't I don't know that I'm going to upgrade to version 5 or not um, but that's the thing I miss about P3D is I miss those uh, those vintage aircraft I love that DC8 and uh, and the L1011 they don't always love me back but <laughs> I do I do love those so anyway all right so I can if I have the multi deal going here okay cool that's pretty that's pretty awesome oh sorry I need to fly the plane fly the plane fly the plane fly the plane so it sounded like JPC was just at that far western arm of so he's approximately 50 miles ahead of us right now
we never really have held a legal VFR eastbound altitude, well at least not for very long. Um, that's all right. I'm, I'm trying to nudge it down to get to about uh, 3,500 here. The, the pier regional altitude is 1,700. So if, we're get, if we get ourselves down to 3,500, that should be that should be fine. Um, Lake Oahe is actually a, it's a it's 2,147 feet above sea level. So it's it's a fairly for being in the, on the plains, it's a fairly high lake. Kind of cool. Just a humongous. I mean. North to south, just a gigantic lake, snake of a lake. So, Don, I know that, I think it's Just Flight, I guess I shouldn't say I know. I believe it's Just Flight that's working on the VC-10. Who's working on the, on the TriStar, do you know? Who's working on the old Whisper Liner? Oh, the TriStar not. Oh, okay. Dang, you got my got my hopes up there, Don. I did see that uh, Lockheed. Speaking of Lockheed, there there was a the Lodestar, right? That was released within the last couple of days. That looks like kind of a neat neat old plane. That's my type of plane right there. The old Lodestar L18. Is that what that is? I saw that pop up on my uh, notifications over there on the org store. Haven't seen too many guys flying it just yet, but and I don't know much about the developer, so I was I was curious. I'm just kind of waiting a little uh, bit Brand, to see. I'm coming up on uh, Wall, South Dakota. I feel like I at least need to stop. Yeah, you you got a wing wave. My uncle uh, my uncle Oren lives down there. So uh, wing wave and and fly around a little bit and tell him I said hi. Okay, can I can I pick you up anything? You know what? Surprise me. They have just about everything. <laughs> that they do. That they do. <laughs> so you guys, I don't know if you're familiar, but that's uh, you've probably seen the signs. You know, 573 miles to Wall Drug. That's the town of Wall, South Dakota. Again, just one of those little touristy deals. Ooh, there's a, uh, oh, I thought that maybe was a little bit of a, a seam, an ortho seam, but it's just a, it's a rendering deal, rendering a bridge there. Probably it's not a bridge, but anyway, I have an uncle that lives in Wall. Age tickets not earning any treats. Really? It's probably because I don't know what I'm doing with that. I, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty new to to Streamlabs. I'm pretty new to streaming in general, age tickets. So I I apologize if you're not earning those. I thought I had them set up so you could earn some dog biscuits or whatever those are, but uh. uh I guess I've never heard anybody <laughs> talking about that, and I don't know what I'd do with them anyway. If I, if you get a thousand of those, uh, what do you do? Do you get to? I don't even know. So, um, but I'll I'll look into that age ticket after I get done. After I get down on the ground, I'll take a peek and see. Um, I'm just happy I've got like some sound effects for uh, like when people people follow and there's a raid and st that's I felt good about that. So I'm taking just little baby steps, right? Just little little baby steps. Uh, 
Uh, we're just about down to 3,500. A little bit more legal here, just in case we have some traffic going the other way. By the way, that was Downwind Sim, who, uh, if you're not on the multi-stream, he's, he's well south of us, but he will actually, he's kind of coming, coming at this a little different. We're taking sort of the northerly route here. He's down here at Wall, and he's going to be coming up the, the interstate till about, this is Phillip, and then there's a, there's a highway that zips you up here. So he will uh, undoubtedly be on the ground with a, uh, with a slice of pie and some ice cream uh, before we get there. So Yeah, guys, I do not think daylight is going to be our friend as we as we contemplate this next leg. I think we're going to have to probably just be patient and spend the night. And for us, it means we're going to have to push this, uh, push the stream. Well, the next leg, it'll be pushed back to probably the end of July and maybe or maybe even early August. As I've, uh, the July dates are are filling up kind of fast. For those of you that uh, are are here for the first time, I, I do stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays mostly. This month was kind of weird because I had some Monday, Wednesday streams that replaced my Tuesday, Thursday streams. I try to find some events that are going on. Very rarely will I just go out and uh, and just just stream. I, I do a lot of flying by myself, but I like to you know I like to have some other stuff going on, so you don't have to listen to me drone on and on and on all night long. But um, but yeah, the let's see. I've got a second. Let's just take a look at if I have some spots still left in a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday in July, or if I'm just going to have to push it back. I don't have anything set in August yet, so... Um, <coughs> excuse me. What do I have here? Yeah, so today is the 16th. Yeah, so Saturday... We've, we've got a USA Flying Club event, Scenic Niagara Falls. There's also a Into the Sky, or In the Sky to PBI event. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to decide between the two of those because they both look really, really good. So that's the 18th. And then um, the, the following week, I'm doing another one of those. Uh, I'm kind of a weird week because Monday is a, is a pack the pattern yeah, there one, at BVA. Three. The winds there a while ago were favoring 3-1, but I don't know what it is right now. Wind 0-8-0 at 8. Yeah, I, I don't know. You, you're, you're the, you're the, you're the range uh, finder, the trail, trailblazer, man. Let us know. What's the HL is? What do you think, Steve? 1-3 or 7? Either one works. 1-3 would be closer to the gate. Yeah, I'm feeling well three. Okay, good to that's know. I'm thinking as well. Yeah, shorter taxi. That's probably a good good point. So yeah, so I'm looking at uh, we got Vat Venture coming up. That's another Monday that I'll probably be streaming. Um, I'm gonna be out of town on the 23rd and the 25th, so I won't be doing anything on those days. Yeah, I'm looking at. Yeah, well, well, we'll have to come up. It looks like with a, yep, it's going to have to be a, an August date.
date, but that's okay. That's okay. So they're saying runway 13. I wonder, are we close enough to pick up? I never know if I. Uh, Let's see if what's our what's our AWOS or A sauce? What do we have here? I always have the hardest time. I know it's in the same spot on every chart, but I always have the oh there we go. Nineteen zero two five. Let's just see if we can pick that up here out of curiosity. One one niner. Zero two. Whoops. And that'd be a negatory. Now, active sky is one two zero point zero zero. Neither. Okay. Kilo Papa. Oh, there it was. Shoot. Kilo Papa Hotel Papa Airport Information Alpha Papa two, Hotel three, Papa four, That's Philip Zulu Weather Wind Calm Visibility One Zero Sky Clear Temperature Two Eight Two Point Nine Altimeter Two Nine Nine Four Advise on initial contact You have All right That's Philip Philip is uh, just a little bit a little bit south and west of Pier So we're Yeah We're not quite We're not quite there yet Been very very happy with the frames today. I I don't have everything jacked up. I'm not I'm not unfortunately able to do that. Um, but I'm getting a little bit a little bit better. Vulcan has helped out a ton. Super Cub. Wow, that thing's got some pep in its step, huh? Yeah, it cruises about 140 miles per hour. Oh wow. Really? That's awesome. I didn't know that. You wouldn't have guessed that. I'll be honest. That's the that's the super in Super Cup. Yeah, pretty super. Man, yeah, that's cooking. That gets you there. Is that all glassed out too, Steve? No, this is full of steam. It's the carbon cub that has all the all the fancy glass, right? Yeah, I have the carbon cub too. I think the uh, the ASDG cub's a little nicer. I've got that big tire carbon cub. Yeah, that's what I have. Every once in a while, we'll sniff a hundred. <laughs> we're not, we're not ever going to get to 140. Um, and like I say, we're leaned out as far as we can get leaned, and and that's all right. One thing I have been keeping an eye on, we did have. Uh, this is a two and a half hour flight, and I had f almost four hours of fuel. So I'm just keeping a close eye on there. Ah, okay, cool. Sorry. Hard to type and fly. Good thing it's uh, pretty dark, doggone nice out here in central South Dakota right now. I was just getting an update on uh, the food situation upstairs. So, you know, that's that's important stuff. Important stuff.
So still no ATC. Again, not that we would necessarily be uh, talking to anybody until we really got close to pier. And even at that, we wouldn't be... I'm going to just ask, just to double check. Now, uh, JPC, again, just for my own understanding, if we happen to have ATC, we would want to make a call to tower at pier at some point, correct? There's no tower at pier. Say class echo. Ah, yeah, that's right. Uh, the the magenta dash line is echo. That's right. Echo to the surface. It's uncontrolled. If it was a blue dash, it would be a delta. Delta. Okay, there you go. So, yep, good. Glad I asked. So, never mind. We would technically be able to come all the way in here. Um, without making any kind of comms, which is essentially what we're doing anyway. This is the Vatastic world, by the way. We've, so we do have some ATC. We're, we're kind of up in this area here. But uh, again, I'm squawking VFR. I think we all are. Uh, look at the coverage tonight. Holy moly. Canada. Oh, Canada. You're doing good. Four, uh, four centers online. And then uh, there must be something... Something going on down here. A lot of traffic up and down the East Coast, as always. And then the typical L.A. to uh, San Francisco thing going on. Ooh, there must be something happening down here. Some small airports being, well, maybe not. They're just kind of staffed up down here in Mexico. Way cool. Typical. couple of them down in South America. Europe's in bed. Australia's having lunch. Yeah, there you go. That's what's happening in your in your Vatastic world this evening. Get out and fly. Fly the friendly skies. We are most definitely losing light. I don't even know, does this thing have I think it does have some lighting options here. Uh, but for the life of me, I don't remember where they are. Let me keep the uh, HSI in view as I look. Panel lights, there we go. Don't appear to be doing much. Radio lights on the outside, or on the inside. Panel lights on the outside. Whoops, I'm listing a little bit. Doesn't, I don't know that did much. Hard to tell, I guess, with with it. It's that tough, tough lighting right now, where it's really, yeah, just hard to see. But I think it's a good call to uh, to shut her down at pier. Call it good for the night, and I'll definitely let you guys know in August when we're going to make that next little hippity hop up to Vanderwall, North Dakota, and why Vanderwall, North Dakota? Of all the random places, it was not suggested to me by anyone. So why in the world would I be going to Vanderwall, North Dakota? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. I'm not going to tell you exactly why until the next stream. I'm going to I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a teaser. But it does have definitely a strong tie to. Uh, to what we're doing with this with this series, it's a, it's a very critical, I guess, location in the Nowhere Fast series, and in the just the whole grand scheme of things in terms of our stream. So I'll leave it at that. You can you can think about that, but uh, I'll definitely I'll definitely tell you more about it in August. As for Pier, South Dakota, it just it just felt like a, uh, a scenic flight, kind of a fun flight. It's a it's a cool spot in South Dakota. Um, the whole uh, Missouri River and Lake Oahe is a, just a neat area anyway. And then flying from, from pier up north up the river is also, well, it's the lake. But uh, making that flight up north is, you'll enjoy that. You'll definitely enjoy that. Okay, 26 minutes since we since we joined the Cheyenne River, and I had uh, that leg is a fairly long leg, 72 miles. 
So I was thinking that was going to be bed, about a 40. I would, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 152. <laughs> Not exactly what I was going for the bet, but it, you got the general idea. I was going to say, here's the bet. Whoever has the better landing rate uh, has to receive uh, 500 bits or $5, whichever you prefer, from the other uh, on stream. Uh, All right. I'll be done before you, though. It would be after the fact for me, but if you do better than me, I'll do it right into your stream because I'm going to host you right afterwards. But uh, whichever one okay. of the two of us, and Kenny Monster's watching both of us, so he can make sure uh, that he, they know. He'll know. Hey. Oh, online. Kenny. Kenny Monster knows that the whole thing is rigged, so let's just, <laughs> let's just get that out in the open right now, that it's all rigged. So 500 bits. Yeah, we're everything. good. We're good for it. One where you don't have to slap it down right away, but we're good for it. Absolutely, Mike. I'm down. I'm down. All right. So you heard it there, guys. 500 bits to the best landing rate between, between uh, JPC and myself. JPC is in the Skyhawk, and I'm in the 152, so very comparable aircraft. So it should be a should be a. I haven't flown this OG 172 in a while, so it's probably going to be a fair competition. <laughs> Kenny Monster's already making, Kenny Monster's already making a negative 340 prediction on my stream for me. <laughs> yeah, he did the same prediction for me as well. I think he's going to go ahead and he's going to be consistent. Oh so. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, um, here's the here's the huge advantage that Jet Pilot Cinnamon has over me. He is a, actually a real world pilot, and I am not. So this will be like a miracle on ice if I'm able to beat this guy. JPC is kind of be kind of been known as my uh, well I've actually had a lot of unofficial CFIs on my stream for the longest time it was actually downwind sim who was a CFI for me and uh, then it was uh, then it was slan alpha slan alpha has been has served as my CFI for a while and uh, now JPC has has become that guy so it's pretty it's pretty cool to, to sit and pick his brain a little bit gives outstanding feedback all right I'm seeing I'm seeing the western arm of the lake, boys and girls. We're just about there. And I'm also watching JPC on his side here. He's looks like he's uh, he's getting to the point where he's probably going to have the field in sight here pretty soon. H tickets uh, a conservative 380. Yeah, hey, I don't I don't uh, hold that against you, H ticket. Kenny Monster has been around long enough to know I had a stretch in June where Kenny was I below 400 at, at, in any plane anywhere I mean now I was landing at uh, you know I was landing at Upper Loon in Idaho but I I was in a landing slump for the longest time but I'll tell you this Kenny I Teflon to 51 in the uh, Falcon just last night horsing around at uh, at Charlotte so you know, no, it was Dulles actually. Flying some patterns at Dulles, I I messed around and and uh, dropped a negative 51 in there. So, um, you know, things can happen, man. Things can happen. <laughs> ah. What's the landing rate prediction amongst friends? I should have actually been on ALT. Where's my thing here? See, I'm not even getting my transponder turned on correctly, so maybe 380 is, is too low. Maybe it should be more like 500. I have set the... Uh, I've set the... Uh, so this is an ELT, I think. It, EPERB, ELT, whatever. I, yeah, I've set this off in this plane several times, and that's a uh, that's a 5G ELT. So that that tells you how how it goes for me every now and again. But again, that's all right. 
That's all part of the all part of the experience, honey. Well, I'm pretty happy, pretty proud of Downwind Sim. He's not caught the stagger wing on fire yet, which is good. He kind of has to like. He's got about seven fuel tanks to manage on that thing, and so I don't know. But uh, anyway. He's done a nice job. Just really a nice, neat rendering of his of his. I mean, he's went all the way through, and and if you have that stagger wing from Alabeo, it it it's like this plane. It looks nothing like the original plane. I'm from Wyoming, age ticket. From a little town in Wyoming called Riverton, Wyoming. So Kenny, did you see the did you see the picture? Speaking of Riverton, did you see the picture I I plopped into my cup of coffee to see what landed in our little uh, regional airport today? I couldn't believe it. I was heading out to uh, run an errand with the junior first officer, and I saw that plane coming in. I'm like, that's a that's a that's a Falcon, that's a Dassault Falcon. And uh, sure enough, got up there a Falcon 900. It was it was awesome. Parked in a parked in a spot where I could get a couple of couple of pictures of it. Wasn't able to get any closer. Um, I I know enough people up at that airport that I I usually can get a little bit behind the scenes, but um, this was a little different situation. Somebody dropped in, actually, the, uh, or went and went and looked up the tail number. It was like a government uh, plane or something like that. The people that got off, boy, they weren't wanting to have much to do with anybody. And um, usually, you know, it's a pretty small town, and people will, people will wave at you and smile at you. These guys, man, they, they hopped in there, hopped in their rigs and got the heck out. So I don't know what they were doing. What in the world they were doing in Riverton, of all places? Yeah, that's that's what I said. I mean, every so often we've got a couple, a couple pilots that actually they they own uh, private jets, and and they fly into and out of uh, Wyoming, or out of our airport every now and again. But even even the state of Wyoming, it has one. I don't even remember what it was like a like a citation or something that they that they have that they use every now and again like for the entire state <laughs> one private jet all right JPC on final you may be uh, you maybe are uh, watching him right now we're gonna take a look and see how he does getting blown around it's a little bit of a crosser today a little bit of a crosser that away, I got some people talking smack there, trying to distract him. Appreciate that. Somebody's hollering, brace, brace. I love that. I love it. Down she goes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. What was that? 111. That's going to be pretty tough to beat. That was a nice landing. That looked better than 111. Man, oh man, that was a good landing. Holy Moses. All right, I got to... Uh, all right. 111. Yeah, you got your work cut out for you, buddy. That looked a lot better than 111, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'll pull the tapes on that one. We'll play a replay here in a bit. I mean, you floated the thing halfway to Minnesota, but we're not going to talk about that. Pretty sure I was still on the landing zone. No, I, I'm just yeah, messing some guy, with you. It some looked guy good. Told me that it was more important to actually get the plane down on the landing zone versus the landing rate. Somebody Correct. says that. That's right. That was our own jet pilot, Cinnamon, who said that. <laughs> All right. So 111. All right. 500 bits on the line. And we 
could probably, honestly, we could probably from here cut the corner just a bit. I think I will. Cut the corner just a little tad here. This is what I'm thinking, guys. Tell me if you tell me if I'm wrong. So we're we're kind of tootling around this area here. I think instead of coming all the way up to there, whoops. What if we said, uh, what if we called it good here, and then we just sort of cut it at about a, maybe not quite a 0, 3, 9, but maybe kind of over to this part here. What would that be? About a about a 109. Just cut the corner just just a tiny scope since we are going to see that part of the uh, of the lake in our next in our next stream. So let's do that. 109 ish. Yeah, it's uh, Kenny. It's not really a good thing, I don't think, but I do think it happens. Um, but I do remember we 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 had that we asked that specific question to to Jet Pilot Cinnamon, who he flies uh, the Embraer 145 in real life, and we asked him about that, and he he said certainly you want to set it down you know nice and smooth you don't want to be you don't want to be bouncing the passengers out of their seat but he said what's what's more important than anything is to make sure that you get your plane down in the in the touchdown zone so that you have time to get it stopped and so um so i don't i don't ever feel too bad about either one honestly because i'm still just you know i'm just i'm learning and i'm getting better but uh, i think if you're going to err one way or the other it's it's maybe better to put her down a little firm just to make sure you get it in the right spot. But I definitely am, have been known to float, especially when I'm trying to set it down soft. <laughs> so I, I would I would expect a, a bit of a floater coming up from the old 152, you guys. All right, across we go. I can already see the lake over there. And... I wouldn't probably wouldn't hurt me to tune in the VOR 109 uh, 025. Wait a second. That's oh that's the ASOS. Sorry. Uh, what is it? Uh, 1125. And there's JPC coming through with the raid. It's all the same people, but hey, welcome. Welcome from JPC's multi, multi twitch over to my multi twitch. Good to have you. So let's see if we can get this lined up. See how close I am to flying and cutting the corner here. Uh, yeah, about, uh, about 115. Yeah, okay. I could even go a little bit more. I'm going to be trying to stay a little north of the field because it sounds like everybody was taking runway 13 as we went in or as they went in so for us yeah we'll be coming in from up here we can pretty much make straight in 13 and then exit alpha 2 or maybe alpha 3 and we're, we park down in in here somewhere so that'll work for us airport elevation again 1700 and change so we'll try to shimmy it down there to uh, 3,500. Again, I've kind of climbed a little bit inadvertently. Boy, it's getting dark down here, isn't it? Holy cow. Long shadows. This was the plane, however, I should mention that where I broke the landing curse, I had uh, for the longest time just just a series of hard landings, like 400 plus landings, and I just just my timing was off, my power settings were off, I you name it, and it just wasn't clicking. Um, but I finally was able to 
I remember uh, it was a little ranch in Wyoming called the Wagon Hound Ranch, and it was this plain, and it was during the uh, during the Nowhere Fast, probably one of the last episodes, 13 or 14, and I finally got a decent landing, and I don't remember what it was, but it was under 100 or something like that, and and uh, after that, everything's uh, gone pretty well. There's been a few a few bouncers and a few floaters and a few little bit a uh, little bit more solid than others but uh, for the most part the landings have been better good night this thing does not have much in the way of night lighting does it not seeing I'm trying to scroll this guy I'm trying to pull it I'm not getting diddly squat anything else nothing up there thing over here I got to keep my eye on the nope that's just heat 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 and heat nothing down below here that I'm not seeing nope oops all right well we're just gonna have to hope for the best we'll kind of have a little bit of a sunlight off our back shoulder so it'll at least illuminate our uh, semi illuminate our panel Going north again for some reason. Too far north. Definitely, definitely good sunset shot there, guys. At the lake. Right now is when the fishing will be starting to pick up, right? Weather's starting to cool off a little bit. Sun's starting to set. Fish beyond the bite right now. Okay, so we've got, oh, it uh, looks like Downwind Sim is still en route. We're going to need to be talking because he's coming up from the, uh, from the south. We're coming in from the north, and probably best that we don't meet in the middle. I'm trying to get a sense of how close I am. I think once I get to the water here, I'm going to be about 20 miles. I could probably make a an initial radio call and just see if see if he's picking us up and and uh, yeah, then we can kind of talk to each other. Fat sim radio calls, if I'm not mistaken, are limited anymore with the with the audio for Fat sim to 20 to 25 miles on the on the Unicom frequency. So there's no no need to be crazy and make that. Uh, 50 miles west of the airfield call because no one's going to hear it. At least not at the airfield. But once we get out, like I say, over the water here, we can pretty much take it straight in on runway uh, on a heading of 130. Boy, I wish this wish these worked better. It's like it doesn't doesn't turn on or off. A little bit of backlighting would be nice. Is there anything on the checklist here? The uh, let's stay level. Pilot view, tail cam dash. Sometimes you can just turn on the the lights. Windows, roof, uh, realistic nose wheel. 
GNS. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything here. All right, we're just gonna we're gonna have to roll with it, guys. That'll be our built-in excuse for why Jet Pilot Cinnamon beat us, right? <laughs> yeah, as long as we can see outside, that's what's most important. And we should have no problem with that. That's just a gorgeous, clear day. Let's see what Active Sky text weather briefing would be giving us here. 080 at 6. 2993. Let's make that adjustment here. 2993. Right in there ish. <laughs> One thing that the new update gives, and I don't know if I like it or not, but it gives you night vision. Instead of the old aviation flashlight, I'm like, I don't know if I like that or not. And I have the airfield in sight. Very good, very good. Beautiful Lake Oahe. Welcome to, here in just a minute, we'll be in the central time zone. Moving from the mountain time zone to the central time zone. Up here, traffic, Cessna 11816, 20 miles to the northwest of the field, inbound, runway 13, pier. Yeah, I didn't think he's probably, it looks like he's probably at least that to the south. Uh, but we'll keep our eyes peeled. We have every light turned on, I believe, that we can have turned on. Um, oh, I do have a dome light, I guess I could turn on. Dome light give us much? A little bit. Yeah, we'll take it. It'll help a little bit. We'll keep it here at about 3,500. And we're just about 2,000 feet above right now. We'll kind of try to get ourselves to where we see where 1-3 is. Probably should stay on the right-hand side. I don't know if Lake flying is like canyon flying where you try to stay to one side or the other but I guess it would make sense if you uh, if you were that you would you'd want to stay on the right there's a little bit of a private airfield over here I don't know if it's lit or not the Thompson field So a little bit of a crosswind off our left-hand side. Don't need to be climbing. Melvin, you still flying? I am indeed. I'm north uh, north of the field. I've been trying to make a Unicom call or two just so we don't run into each other. Okay, I, I did not hear you, so let me make sure I'm still connected. Roger, I'm, I'm, Roger. I'm right next to the field. Oh, okay, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm looking for him. Uh, Unicom traffic uh, radio check. from the field over the river. Roger, uh, 11816, approximately 10 miles to the north, inbound, runway 13. Okay, Roger, we'll do a, a U-turn over the river here and head north over the lake. We'll stay to the west of the river, and uh, we'll be looking for you. And then we'll be number two on landing. Roger. Okay, so maybe we'll see him. Vulcan, that's another thing that I think has it's it does a nice job of is it does show 
traffic a little bit more uh, realistically. I, th I think there's still a bit of a delay, but it's not uh, as bad as it uh, as it was in 11.4. Okay, so we're we're gonna stay on this easterly course. We're kind of on a 45 right now for uh, runway 13. Not not exactly your typical pattern here, but really truly, if I was flying this baby in real life, I I think you a guy should probably fly over the field, get a get a sense for what's going on in the area, make some make some calls on the CTAF, and just kind of get get all that sorted out before you just went barreling straight in but uh but uh, we're vat simming it and shoot you guys have been watching this thing some of you for over two hours so let's uh, let's get on the ground let's get some pie man it's that time i might have been optimistic when i said i was 10 miles he's going to stay west of the river so he's out here somewhere we need to descend i'm going to start to pull some power back here we don't need to be in a big hurry. Let's get ourselves down to 2,500 or 2,700. Let's get about uh, let's get to pattern altitude here until we see the poppies. Let's see if we can get on a halfway decent glide slope and maybe have a halfway stable approach here. Okay, lights are on. Altimeter is set. Approach is uh, briefed, essentially straight in. And we're going to be making a right-hand turn on Alpha 3 or Alpha 4, depending on where we get, get it shut down. 111, JPC, throwing it back out there at me, tossing it up there, putting the pressure on. Heading uh, uh, north on the west side of Lake Oahe. There you go. Did I say that right? Hey, firm. All of it. Uh, nice job, man. You fit right in with the locals. People, people. Thank you, my friend. People think I'm joking when they, they. I'm looking for. I'm looking for 816. I still don't see you, so just holler when you get close down here to the dam roger uh 816 i would estimate we're approximately three miles north of the dam we're on the east side of uh of the lake at uh, 4000 okay roger we're looking eight, uh eight hotel sierra he's over there we need to be descending 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 a little out of time here. I'm actually climbing when I wanted to be down to 27. He's out there somewhere, guys. Looks like his cockpit lighting is about as good as ours, although he has, he's got the back lighting going on his uh, instruments. That looks really cool. That's awesome. Okay, down we go, down we go. Power set about, uh, now let's put the condition full forward. We're going to set this at about 1800, I think, and just see if we can't get on a glide here, about a 500 feet per minute glide. It usually works out fairly well for us. Might be just a hair too far out to make that turn, but uh, yeah, that's got us down there around 70. Poppies are saying we're a little bit low right now, but that's, so we'll just kind of try to hold 3,500. Until I can get some confirmation here. We're so darn slow. That stagger wing is so quick. I'm sure he's just out there running circles. almost over the dam here's here's the dam right here basically so we'll make that call 
not quite there just yet but uh, almost Jet Pilot Cinnamon throwing out the 111 as the mark to beat as well as his official guess. Very nice, very nice. Good fixins. Hello, sir. Thanks for coming over with uh, our friend JPC. Good to see you, man. Welcome to the darkest cockpit in the West here. I <laughs> don't know what's going on, but I got nothing capping. All right, I think I could probably say almost, not quite there yet. Thirty-two. Yeah, I'm seeing nothing but reds here, so let's uh, let's keep it fairly level. I have I have lost a little bit of altitude. To put it in perspective, I'm doing seventy and. Ralph is probably doing 170 right now, so it's more than two to one at this point. Where are you? Should have just had him land first. Almost to the dam. Almost to the dam. Pure traffic, Cessna 11816. We're Crossing by the dam, uh, final runway one three, pure. Pure traffic, uh, Sky Staggerwing 748 Hotel Sierra is uh, now turning south uh, over Lake Oahe and will be number two for runway one three. We'll report uh, crossing the dam and we'll be number two for uh, pure. I'll try to keep the speed up for you there, buddy. I'm looking for you. Still, have, still don't see you. Doing about 80 right now, so you'll you'll catch me in a hurry. <clears throat> so when I was a kid. We were lucky enough that we actually could fly 737s from uh, from where I lived in Wyoming out here to South Dakota, and they would actually have a 737 that would come land in in pier. <laughs> he's flying the Staggerwing, good fixins. So he's really rolling. He's got the gear up, and he's got that big old uh, Wasp cranking it out. But I can remember that was a, those were wonderful times. Frontier and Western Airlines take you right there. It was awesome. Still showing I'm a little bit low on the poppies. We're at about 2,700, so just about pattern altitude right now. So we'll just, again, we're on a, like a, just a little lazy 200 foot per minute descent rate right now. I'm just going to try to trim that out, level it off till I get to, till I get to the glide, and then I'll back the power off again to about 1800, and try to get back on that 500 feet per minute. Glide seems like it just got a little bit brighter for some reason. Interesting. Looking for a ref speed of about 55. There is one white dot. Hotel Sierra is over There's the dam, southbound, number two for runway 13 at uh, Pier. Okay, down we go, down we go. Yeah, Pier Traffic's 
Uh, Cessna 816, two mile final, one three. Pure. Three? Did I really just say three? Whoa. Oh, oh, easy, easy. Okay, first notch coming in. Crosswind off our left just a little bit. Right about 70 knots, that's good speed for us. I might leave it as a flaps one approach tonight. Try to get down and get vacated also. So it'd be nice if I could catch this uh, first, well, second exit. Okay, try to be 60 over the numbers, or over the fence, I should say, if I can. Yeah, a little quick, but not too bad. Notoriously dim landing lights. And down we go. Try to get on the center line. Oh, it's a floater. It's a hard one. Yep, 388. Ran out of juice. <laughs> Tried to float it way too much. All right, Mike. I owe you bits, man. It was close to being pretty good. And then when I lifted the nose up at the end, that was when it uh, turned south. Whoa. All right, so let's get out of here. Yeah. Up here, traffic. Uh, Cessna 816, we're clear on Alpha 2. Well, rats. That was my professional call. Um, translated, get out of the way. <laughs> a firm, a firm. Uh, yeah, I did. Just a little too much. I had it fairly close. We'll watch the replay. Um, and then, like I say, when I lifted the nose, what I, what I should have done, just added some power back in. Actually, what I should have done, should have, should have done is as soon as I, as soon as I ballooned it, I should have just went around, but, uh, that's okay. 388 or whatever it was. That's, that's just kind of what happens sometimes. Okay. Let's, uh, there's slant alpha's hanger. We'll just kind of come over here. Yeah. You know, it was. It was in the touchdown zone still, I believe, and it was uh, fairly well on the center line. So, you know, a bit firm, but two out of three, that's all right. Okay, down we go. Let's, uh, let's set the parking brake and get shut down. And we'll call this baby a stream. I am going to disconnect from the network and... Let's uh, let's power down. Everything off, 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 off. Cut the engine. Air is off. All right, let's watch the replay here. Alt R. Might be a little dark, but I think we'll get the gist of it. Nice downwind. Downwind is a solid, solid guy, man. He he can really fly that plane. All right, let's see here. Thanks. Got a little squirrely at the end there. Trying to come at the different angles here. Let's see. What do I have? Tower. That There's one got some... close. He went minus 114. Man. Yeah, he's a he's a guy that it's he's a he's pretty tough to beat. He's pretty darn tough to beat. 
a little what, bit. What was the? What was you guys' bet? Whoever had the five hundred bits. Five hundred bits. Still one out of the three of us. Minus one eleven. Oh, nice. And what are you flying tonight, Mike? Flew the uh, Cessna one seventy two. <laughs> Again, he's got a new emote for rough landings. Ah, oh, very good, very good. I think, again, we were pretty close to where we wanted to be, so we're looking pretty good here. That's a little bit of an early flare. Oh, there, yeah, there was a bigger bubble. And then there was the. Uh, Did you guys uh, I just you disconnect already? There was the late bubble. Yep, there was the late okay. bubble. I'm here all yep. by myself. Boom. Yep. Yep, there was the second bubble. Second bubble got us. Hey, yeah, I just. I was just watching the replay. Sorry about that. That's all right. They had a special on uh, taxiway lights up here. All right. Like. Uh, oh, yeah, you got to get the updated version. Right there. Oh, so close. So close. Yep, that, that's just how close it can be, my friends. All right, well, anyhow, that was still, that was still really fun. That was, uh, Guys, that was fun. That was a lot of porpoising, Melvin. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was... That uh, should have been a go-around right at the uh, that second big balloon. That should have 100% been go-around. Yep, totally agree. Totally agree. Okay, well, let's do this. That's right. I, I I just wanted to survive and go eat some pie. All right, I'm going to, we're going to call it good here again. Uh, tune in. Uh, let's see, Saturday we've got a choice. I don't know yet if I'm going to fly the Niagara Falls event or the BPI event, but we'll be doing something on Saturday. And then uh, and hang out in the Discord and, and take a take a gander at the stream schedule because the the following week is kind of weird we've got a monday event and i think also a wednesday event and i might take tuesday and thursday off again i did that earlier in the month so uh you'll have to go check it out i can't remember but um, appreciate everybody popping by keep those 500 bits i'm going to ask you a question all right i'm ready um oh shoot actually i should i'm going to need to show you i need to show you a picture hold on all right, so he's going to show me a picture. Try to get my bits back. Anyway, um, so hopefully you'll you'll join us uh, Saturday or maybe Something next week. That is on the. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. Okay. If you're able to look at the Discord. All right, I'm looking right now. All right, this is a piece of uh, equipment that is on the Embraer 145. Ooh. What are those called? Take a guess at what those would be. Those called. those are um, those are those are vortex somethings. Is my guess. I don't remember. They're 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 designed to uh, to help the smooth out the flow over the over the wing, right? So you're thinking of vortex generators. Yeah, vortex generators. Is that kind of what they are? Not quite. It's not quite. So vortex generators are going to be the small little things that you see. I don't know if you can see. Yep. I'm not sure. Oh, on the top. On yeah, the top. on the top of the wing. And these ones are underneath. They are Vortilons. Something that's uh, not exactly specific to the 145, but you don't see them on a whole heck of a lot of other airplanes. They're Vortilons. Um, what do Vortilons do? Yeah. Um, more or less the same thing as vortex generators. Okay. Uh, maybe not exactly though. They're more for as Vortilons are fixed aerodynamic devices on aircraft wings use improved handling at low speeds. The 145. Yeah. Actually not the world's best handler at low speeds. So it's so yeah. So a bit of a bit of a stall kit for the 145. I see. Nice. That was the last chance. Sorry, <laughs> you owe me 500 bits. <laughs> All right, you got it, man. All right, hang tight, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream and then I'll I'll be back in the in the chat here in just a sec. Okay, that's gonna do it for me again. Thank you so much for stopping by, everybody. Great to have some new friends coming on board as well. 
Um, I let's see, we had Avatec 320. Uh, let's see if I can get to all these. There were a lot. Captain Hall, uh, Killaluck, uh, and 757. Appreciate the raid again. That was that was.